Hey also, I have a bit of a weird video for you guys today uh, with the recent news of the closure of the official Classic server. I kind of wanted to make a video about how Classic RO was better and how Renewal got it wrong. Um, while Renewal is inferior in many ways, uh, this video will be focusing on mainly how the class progression is, is just terribly terrible. Um, so the class progression has kind of been going down the wrong track ever since Transcending first came out. Uh, and it was something that Renewal could have fixed, but instead they kind of continued to make the game worse and piled bad game mechanics on top of bad progression. Um, so to review kind of what happens exactly in progressing through your class choice, um, Everyone who's ever played knows that you start out the game as a novice. Uh, and then after your first 10 job levels, you're immediately presented with the choice uh, of what kind of playstyle you want to go with. Do you want to be a fighter, um, like a swordsman? Do you want to be a spellcaster, like a mage? A healer, uh, like an acolyte? Uh, maybe you want to attack from a distance, like an archer? Uh, steal items and stealthily attack your enemies, like a thief? or uh, maybe barter with other players as a merchant. So right away you get six options. Um, and then later updates you could choose from the expanded classes of Taekwon Kid, Ninja, Gunslinger, and Super Novice. Um, we're not even gonna talk about Doram because they're stupid. Okay, so after you have picked your initial play style, you're kind of, you're presented with two additional uh, options bringing it to a grand total of 12 choices. Uh, you have Knight, Crusader, uh, Wizard, Sage, Hunter, uh, Bard and Dancer. I count that as one choice because it just is dependent on what your gender is. Blacksmith, Alchemist, Assassin, Rogue, Priest, Monk. So 12 picks. There's 12 different paths. In, in just two decisions that you make in the game, you can go down 12 different paths. Um, and... Unfortunately, that's kind of like where the choices stop, and from that point forward, it's just grind. Um, so, what the game expects you to do is to start again from level 1 in order to climb back to your second class transcendent choice, or your transcendent character. It's kind of like an alter ego of their former version. Um, and they're just inherently more powerful. They have higher HP and they get more stat points. Um, which makes anything that's not a Transcendent functionally useless against them in PvP and PvM. So, uh, Transcending gives you more power, but it doesn't transcend your experience in the game. It's not really a choice. You become the same thing you already were, but with a couple more skills. Like, Assassin Cross gets four new skills, uh, Biochemist gets three skills, Paladin gets three, but Lord Knight gets eight, Scholar gets eight. Uh, there's very little balance, and there's really almost no choice when it comes to getting these skills. Um, in some cases, like with Double Bolt for Scholar, they modify an existing skill, um, but a lot of times the prior skills are just obsolete compared to the new ones that you get, um, like... Focus Aero Strike, Aero Vulcan, High Speed Cart Ram. These completely replace anything that you would have ever used. Um, and this gets worse as the further you get when you get into third class characters. So, yeah, like, obsolescence is kind of this recurring theme uh, with the future release of third class characters. Like, why would anybody want to use uh, Aero Vulcan? when you have severe rainstorm available to you? Or uh, why would you use high speed cart ram when mechanic gets axe tornado, like arm cannon, um, ice launcher, flame launcher. They get all kinds of leveling skills that are way better than high speed cart ram. Even for MVPing, you're talking about um, axe boomerang versus high speed cart ram. At the higher levels of the game, there's no reason to go back and use these old abilities. So, like, skills, I mean, they don't always fall to the wayside, but, um, like, most of the time, skills in the past never get used. A lot of times, like, for Rune Knight, 
that you're never really using any of your second class abilities, like if you're just using Dragon's Breath or something. Um, so to that point, like, what's the point of those skills even existing other than to be a prerequisite for something else? There's no point in, like, it just completely undermines the entire love process. The, the path that you take to get to where you are is just completely undermined in that situation. Like, imagine, now that we've kind of gone over how the progression is, imagine if you were a new player and your friend told you about the game and they want to find out, uh, like, what they have to do to get to where you are so that you can play together at the higher levels of the game. And you tell them, okay, so you need to go from 1 to 99, and then you need to start over and go from 1 to 99 again, except it takes longer this time. Then there's 76 additional levels, and that's when you're going to be at the highest level. Like, without knowing how long each level takes, like, for all a new player knows, the levels are like a level every 10 minutes, uh, even though it's much longer than that, obviously. But without knowing how long each level takes, it would still be like a huge non-starter for most people. It's way too compl complicated, and it's obviously time-consuming just at face value. I have to level 99 levels twice, and then do an, a, like a whole other wave of leveling to 175. Even if you said, yeah, max level is 175, and you level from 1 to 175, that would still be a ridiculous amount of levels to expect somebody with no concept of the game to, to like achieve. Um... So, and also, like, on top of that, the levels are really annoying. Like, it's just a bad experience because you're not making decisions along the way. You're just doing things that you've already done. Like, you get your leveling skill, and then you just do that, the same thing, over and over. And you might change the monsters you're killing, but ultimately, it's kind of the same. Um, so, yeah, this kind of brings me to an idea that I had for a private server. Um, my idea would be to cut out all the crap and condense things into one understandable pathway i would propose this um, make it just 1 to 99 in one go so to, to for how that would work is from 1 to 12 you have your novice stage that's where you're getting your first 10 job levels then from 12 to 55 you would have your first class so swordsman those ones um, from 55 to 80 is where you would be your second class. So these guys. Um, and then from 80 to 99, you would be your third class. And you would condense transcendent and third class into being the same tree. So I'll go over how that looks in, in a minute. And I kind of showed it briefly before, but I want to go into more detail there. Um, so anyone playing the original game knows that the game gets super, super boring after level 80. If you played the classic version of the game, you know that once you hit level 80, you've pretty much guaranteed to have hit job 50 by then. So as a second class, by the time you've finished making all your decisions about your character, you're not even halfway through your leveling process to 99. The halfway point to 99 in the classic version of the game is level 96 in terms of experience. So by level 80, you're not even... A fraction of the way through or you're only a fraction of the way through and there's so much more to go so by fragmenting it out this way where 80 to 99 is third class um, the solution fixes the problem where you're not making decisions and the game gets boring and it keeps the game engaging the whole time so like I said third classes include trans and third class into one consolidated third class um, so if you went wizard, you would go high wizard, or you would go warlock. Now, you might think that there's like a huge difference in the skills available to high wizard and warlock, and I've thought of that, <laughs> I'm getting there, and um, I I want to go over that in a second. But first I want to illustrate a concept um, that each class has two identities in the skill tree. So to, to illustrate that point, we'll look at knight. Um, so you can see as a knight, you have a, a split identity between your sword skills and your spear skills. 
Um, depending on your play style, you might pick one or the other, but usually you don't mix the two because it would prevent you from reaching the highest levels in how you want to play. So, for example, if you get Brandish Spear level 10 and you want to get... Um, like pierce because that's good for single target large boss killing and spear boomerang like you really like the idea of spears uh you won't have room for bowling bash you see we're over the limit and there's no way that we could get a a, a usable level of bowling bash if we got all of cavalier mastery and everything that we would want as a spear um spear knight um there's just no way of getting this this skill it's just it so you can see the, the identity split there. Um, so what I would propose is to treat second class kind of like a trial period to see what kind of play style you like within your second class choice. Uh, then when you complete the third class quest, this is where uh, renewal comes into play. Um, renewal should have always been a restructuring of class progression. Uh, now that they have more character models to work with, um, they, uh, when you complete your third class quest, uh, you would just refund all the skill points and your skill tree would transform into whatever uh, pathway you wanted to go back, back on. So like I said with wizard, you would go high wizard or warlock. And then when you went high wizard, some of the skills that you had available as a wizard would not be there anymore because they're not relevant to the progression of the high wizard tree and Warlock would get those skills instead, and Warlock would not have some skills available to it that Wizard had like in the past, and I'll show you how that looks. Um, so the skill tree would get restructured and divvied out to either one of these classes uh, based on what the play style and the identity of that character would be. So it gives another choice into the equation. So Swordsman, you can choose to be a, a Knight or a Crusader, and then Knight, you can choose to be a Lord Knight or a Rune Knight. So it's just another level of choice, and it gives the, uh, the player the freedom to pick the skills that they want to use the most, and they won't have any bad options to pick from. So they'll make hard decisions about how to optimize their last 40 job levels. Um, and that's just an approximate number. If this was actually going to be made, that might need to be taken a closer look at, but I think 40 is about uh, a fair number. All right, so what does this look like? <laughs> uh, the rest of the video is just gonna be going through each class and explaining what their class identity is and how the skill restructuring fits into the vision for each character. Um, so try to forget about how, this, how strong certain abilities are in current renewal. Ideally, these skills would be balanced to classic mechanics doing reasonable amounts of damage. Uh, so you'll notice that some second class skills are removed, like I said, from the third class skill tree and assigned to the role that truly requires the skill. Um, so starting with, with Knight, um, Lord Knight is more of a physical powerhouse that uses their raw strength to smash their enemies with spears mounted on picos, where Rune Knights are more like mystical warriors that use ancient knowledge to empower their auto attacks or reg their, their damage with runes. As such, uh, Lord Knights would inherit the spear skills from the Rune Knight tree and so i'm talking like these these ones over here phantom thrust hundred spear um and uh, sonic wave i believe uh so they would inherit those abilities and then some of them would be retooled to be spear only abilities uh while rune knight would inherit some of the more mythical skills from the lord knight tree um like aura blade parry frenzy uh relax uh, Lord Knights would be more strength focused, whereas Rune Knights would be more intelligence focused to benefit Dragon's Breath. Or, um, like, if Rune Mastery required int, uh, your your rune would compensate for your lack of strength, and it would give you build diversity between the two classes. So, Crusader would have the option to become either a Paladin or a Royal Guard. Uh, Paladin is more of the Holy Warrior. Uh, they're a party tank uh, slash support type role. Um, they would buff their allies with auras and stats while keeping them safe from damage. Um, and royal guards would be frontliners of the battle. Uh, they'd have they'd charge forward with spears and they'd mow down the enemy. Um, Paladins would inherit Genesis Ray, 
Piety, King's Grace, Prestige, and Trample, and Royal Guard would inherit uh, Rapid Smiting and Martyr's Reckoning. And you can see the skill totals at the bottom. Um, by divvying up the abilities into identity, it actually is inherently balanced. Um, this, this class has no more abilities, uh, skill levels to get than the other. Um, so you're not going to be set back by having less options available by going either Paladin or Royal Guard. It's just a different playstyle. So um, next we have Wizard. A uh, wizard can ascend to become either a high wizard or a corrupt warlock. High wizards amplify their prior magic abilities and evolve them into stronger spells with longer cooldowns, while warlock is more of an anti-mage. Um, they isolate the enemy, they weaken them, and then they burst them down with spells stored in their spellbook with no cooldown. Um, high wizard would inherit chain lightning, crimson rock, comet, frost misty, jack frost, Earth Strain, Sienna, Execrate, uh, Recognize Spell, and Radius. And these are just amplified versions of the previous magic ab abilities, elemental magic, that Wizard has. They evolve those abilities, and then they get Mystical Amplification to deal big burst AoE damage. Um, but obviously, the, the AoE damage would have to not be as strong as a single target, because one is hitting many and one is hitting one target. So... Warlock would inherit um, Soul Drain, Ganbantine, Gravitational Field, and Napalm Vulcan. Um, so High Wizard is more of an AoE crowd control, while Warlocks are more single target lockdown. So you can imagine you would White Imprison something and then Tetra Vortex or uh, Soul Drain, and you would have intense telekinesis and soul expansion to take down like ghost ring users or something. Um, so these have a relatively even amount of skills. You're still going to make have to make big choices because keep in mind, you're going to have your 50 job levels from your second class and then 40 job levels from your third class choice, which means there's no way you can get all of the abilities. You'll have to pick and choose what kind of elementalist you would want to be or what kind of do you want, uh, warlock you want to be. Do you want to have a single target burst with Tetra Vortex or do you maybe want to have all of this other CC on your kit? So moving on to Sage, uh, Sage could tra travel down the path of Scholar or Sorcerer. Uh, scholar focuses on expanding their understanding of elemental attacks, where Sorcerers focus on evolving the magic tree of um, known as Familiars. Um, they channel their magical attacks through an ally familiar to modify the effect of their spells. Um, personally, I think that the elementals that scholars uh, would summon should be treated like pets, where they're not involved in monster combat, unlike the current system where you summon the monster with a catalyst item, and then it can die in combat right away, and it doesn't really modify your abilities. So think of them more of a follower and less as like, another monster that adds to it your attacks but depending on the one that you summon it would modify your your abilities in different ways like how a water elemental uh, an aqua would make your psychic wave water element so something like that um sorcerers or uh scholars would inherit a rulo spell fist and extreme vacuum uh and sorcerers would inherit foresight uh, scholars are designed to put up uh, defenses and cast single target abilities from afar or lock down the enemies and blind them while raiding bolts um, with auto attacks. So you could fiber lock somebody, then put down a vacuum on them, then blinding mist yourself and then start spamming bolts on them and they'll, you know, die really quickly because once you break fiber lock with like fire bolt or something, they're still going to be locked down with vacuum. Um, so the idea is to put a whole bunch of obstacles in the way of the enemy, and then when they approach, you would hit them with bolts. Um, and then sorcerers would use area of effect magic and conjuring their abilities through familiars to deal different types of damage. So they would have more diversity, and they would have the ability to attack multiple targets at once. So a hunter would become either a sniper or a ranger. A sniper would focus on long range attacks, where rangers would focus on beast mastery and trapping. Again, uh, consider that these abilities would need to be rebalanced so that they would make sense uh, in a classic server context. Um, so 
Rangers would be, again, mo more focused on beast mastery and trapping. So Sniper would inherit Camouflage. They would both have this ability just to make sure that the skill values are relatively similar. Um, I would still... I'm not too sold on putting Bomb Cluster, Detonator, and Electric Shock over on this tree along with Trap Research. I think that would make more sense on Ranger, but it would limit the options that you have for Sniper. Um, perhaps there could be another way to maybe add five levels to Fear Breeze or No Limits to compensate for the number of skill points that would be different if these were to be moved back over to the Ranger tree. I think Ranger would make more sense to be uh, Trapper. So. A, a sniper would inherit camouflage, no limit, aim bolt, aerostorm, fear breeze, and ranger would inherit falcon assault. And um, I think it would be really interesting if you could use a falcon and a warg at the same time. So you'd have this really interesting auto attack kind of build going on where you'd have your, your summons constantly attacking for you. Um, and so moving on from there, we have bard and dancer. Um, it's, it's a really big tree because there's four classes within here. Um, they can become Minstrel, Maestro, Gypsy, or Wanderer. Ultimately, Maestros and Wanderers focus more on songs and attacking with their voice, and Minstrel and Gypsy focus on dances and more offensive tools like Tarot Card, Arrow Vulcan. Uh, a notable difference is that uh, Wanderer gets Severe Rainstorm, where Maestro... Uh, where... where um, minstrel would get severe rainstorm and it's ultimately it's just to try and make the abilities suit the characters a little bit more with their identity um where minstrel and gypsy are used to working alone whereas maestros and wanderers are used to working in chorus with each other all right so this is next one's a really big one and i do want to take a second to um tackle this issue that's kind of existed with uh genetic and mechanic so there's this really awkward situation that exists in the merchant skill tree and it's a complete mess uh because you have something like alchemist which gets axe mastery but then you have Master Smith, or a mechanic that gets Axe Mastery. And then you have Genetic getting uh, Cart Boost when Master Smith had Cart Boost first. Um, I can't possibly begin to explain where this entire Mado tree even came from. Like, I don't know what this this tree had i don't understand how building like swords has to do with building a robot mech thing from the future like it's a big big leap to make um and i don't know why genetic gets cart skills when they previously had nothing to do with carts when Master Smith got high speed cart ram and cart boost. Like why do why does Master Smith get that and mechanic get cart remodeling and cart tornado and stuff? It just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh so yeah, and I and I don't know why uh um mass uh a mechanic would get the axe abilities when Alchemist had the axe option in their tree. Um, so there's two classes with, with Axe Mastery, and there's two classes with Cart Boost. Like, what is up with that? So, that's an awkward situation, and I wanted to illustrate them side by side so you can kind of see where I'm coming from on it. So one solution that I would suggest would be migrating the Axe skills from the Blacksmith tree over to the Alchemist tree, um, which would give, so you can see that right down here, Axe Mastery, Axe Boomerang, Axe Tornado, and Power Swing. So this would basically become Axe Mastery 2, and it would give you the uh, abilities to use these other Axe skills. Um, since Biochemist has FCP, they would be uh, more expected to be battling in close combat, so thematically I think it more makes more sense for Biochemist to get the Axe skills, especially when Genetic has so many other nature-esque 
uh, abilities at their disposal. Genetic would be uh, kind of like uh, Poison Ivy from Batman, where they use mutant plants to do their attacks, like Crazy Vines, Thorn Wall, Bloodsucker, Mandragora, Howl, Hell Plant. Uh, again, these would have to be rebalanced to deal a reasonable amount of damage so that they could actually level and, you know, be offensive or useful in WoW. So for Mechanic and Mastersmith, I would suggest um, treating the entire Mado system like a homunculus instead of having it be your own skill tree. Um, because it's way too many skill points. Uh, if you take all of the uh, abilities, it's 77 abilities. Uh, and that would be too many, too many skills to balance between the two classes. So I would suggest taking those all away and creating a Mado like homunculus. Um, a mechanic can, quit, can, can complete a quest uh, to build a Mado suit that follows them around like a homunculus does. They get one skill every three levels, the same as a homunculus, up to level 99. This, uh, then their um, Madunculus can use their abilities to assist the mechanic in combat. For example, casting a neutral barrier, so a mechanic can use their newly acquired cart cannon skill because they would inherit the cart abilities from genetic, um, since genetic has so many skill points already. They would inherit the cart abilities uh, to attack from like range safety. But you could also maybe, if you wanted to focus on like a suicidal destruction build, you would focus on different things. Uh, if you wanted it to attack with you in an AOE, you would have arm cannon and you'd have it do elemental stuff. That way you could kind of treat it as like a partner instead of like having this weird random thing that makes no sense. Um, so I could go on t with the merchant class quite a bit, but let's, uh, in the interest of time, move on to assassin. Uh, Assassin has really two clear identities. They have the poison tree, and then they have like a hack and slash uh, element to them. Uh, it's pretty obvious which is which. Um, Assassin crosses would mix their poisons to further uh, in enhance their weaponry and come up with fun and exciting ways to um, inhibit the enemy. So they could put like, imagine if you had all access to uh, new poison research. And if you could then use the new poison with like venom dust or poisonous smoke to apply different effects. Um, and then when monsters are under those effects or enemies are under those effects, you would deal more damage when you're using a, a, a different poison on your weapon. Um, where a GX goes all in on chopping their enemies to bits, uh, to bits um, Synexes get all of the poisony goodness. Again, it would have to be rebalanced to be relevant. Like, nobody goes poison react, venom dust, or venom splasher for a reason. That's where renewal comes in. It gives new life to these abilities, and it makes it so that you can build a character that plays to your playstyle and uh, that's actually viable. Uh, and then, of course, GX would get all the spinny, choppy blade skills like Rolling Cutter, Cross Impact, Dark Claw, Cross Rip Slash, Weapon Block, Counter Slash. Uh, there's not a lot of abilities. GX has the lowest amount of skills uh, of all of them. So if you think Assassin goes job 50 and then they get 40 more, they can get pretty much every ability. Uh, and Assassin has kind of always been that way. Like on Thief, if you go job 50, you're only going to miss two skill points uh as as a assassin you're you're not really going to be missing any points because nobody went enchant poison poison react venom dust or venom splasher anyway so it's kind of always had very low options and this is the lowest it exists so i still think that in the interest of other classes 40 job levels for your third class after you have gone second class uh, is a reasonable amount of skills to give them for the new additional skills they're going to have available. And the, the good thing about these skills is they don't make your previous skills obsolete anymore. They just add to the benefit. So moving on to um, Stalker and Chaser, uh, they seem really similar on paper. Um, they're both lurking in the shadows, stealthing around and causing trouble. Um, the best way I can differentiate them is that Stalker is more about harassment as a stalker does, and a shadow chaser is about becoming like the shadow link of Ragnarok, where you copy the enemy and you start beating them at their own game. 
uh, Stalker gets skills that are about stripping the enemy down and tormenting them, like how Stalkers do. And uh, Shadow Chaser gives skills that give them an advantage at stealing their enemy's greatest skill, demotivate, and uh, then you demotivate them at like an emotional level with the masquerades. So you would like take their take their ability, and then you would debuff them, and then you would beat them at their own game. Theoretically, is how it would work. Um, and let's see. Moving on, we have. Um, High Priest and Archbishop, those are pretty clear-cut. Uh, there's two clear identities. High Priest focus on support and keeping your allies alive, and Archbishops focus on exercising demons and the undead, as well as empowering their allies with holy property attacks, increasing incoming damage that the enemies receive. Uh, and a High Priest would be able to use party buffs, um, like, I remember back in the Acolyte days where you'd have to buff down your party list, uh, and as a priest, you're, like, encountering how that's annoying, and then you graduate into being a high priest where you have a little bit better quality of life, and you're more helpful overall to support an entire party instead of one or two players. Um, and Archbishops are just there for killing demons they're really helpful in the end game because there's a lot of demon monsters and undead um, so it would always be good to have one around with you so last but not least we have monks um, so a monk would become either a champion or a shura um, these classes are all about how you use your spirit spheres uh, champions get fewer spheres but they have zen to reload quickly and shura only has rising dragon to uh, replenish their spheres uh, so they need to use their spheres wisely uh, so champions gain more automatic combos with flash combo dragon combo and chain crush combos these skills would have to be transformed so if you were to go up to somebody and use dragon combo on them this would be an active ability or you could trigger it off of raging trifecta to deal more damage um, if you were to use dragon combo it would automatically cast Rampage Blaster and Raging Palm Strike. If you were to use Flash Combo, it would automatically cast Raging Thrust and Skynet Blow. Um, and then if you were to cast, cast Chain Crush Combo, it would be for Raging Quadruple Flo uh, Blow and Fallen Empire. So if you think about it, um, Dragon Combo is more about crowd control and knocking your enemy back at the end of your combo. And then Flash Combo is more like dealing AoE damage, um, because Raging Thrust is an AoE attack and uh, Skynet Blow is an AoE. Uh, so Raging Thrust might knock an opponent back a few cells, but it would still be within Skynet Blow's range to deal damage. And then Chain Crush Combo is just about rapid striking, so you'd hit him four more times and then a bunch more times with Fallen Empire. Uh, and then Shuras would be more about like being a sledgehammer. Like they would get G Fist, which would pretty much one shot anybody. Um, but they also have Tiger Cannon, Glacier Fist, and Gate of Hell. Uh, those are no joke either. Um, champions would be more like circling the fight and looking for uh, stragglers to pick off. And then when the opportunity prevents itself, they would go in for like a cursed circle and a windmill to fit to help their team take down uh, the enemy, where Shuras would be about taking down the toughest targets, like Royal Guards or Lord Knights, so they would be more like in the battle, and that way if they saw a champion go in for a snap, they could do um, Assimilate Power and take away all their spheres, and I would maybe change Assimilate Power so it doesn't get rid of your own, but instead it would add the opponent's spheres to yours, so if you are fighting a champion, you could steal their spheres, and then you would actually have some more to work with. If dragon com, if um, not dragon combo, if rising dragon was on cooldown and you had no spheres left or you didn't have as many, so champions would actually enable you to keep going in the fight. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have for the class progression suggestions. Uh, thanks to everyone who stuck around to hear me out. I know this video wasn't super thrilling, and it was a lot of talking, but hopefully someday uh, we could see a server like this. Uh, classic mechanics with a better feel 
to make people enjoy the game every step of the way, giving them options and decisions to make throughout the entire leveling process, and playing a class that they can truly identify with, uh, discovering new ways that they can all work together instead of letting obsolete skills fall to the wayside and letting the new most powerful skills take the main stage. Um, so I just think it would be so cool to see a world where somebody had a paladin uh, sacrifice, sacrificing themselves for the party, and then a royal guard was frontlining, or like uh, you had a dragon's breath rune knight statusing the enemy from afar, or you know you just have all these playstyles that now open up if you were to restructure the game this way and put everything on a level playing field, let everybody get to the uh, play the style that they really want, and stop putting the end game so far out of reach. The end game should be for getting gear and um, and different things that add a little twist to your build. The things that you can make your stat builds different. The things that will make your abilities optimized so there's there's the there's the game of picking your skill build and then there's the meta game of within that what gear am i looking for the end game should cater to expanding the enjoyment of your skills instead of just putting more leveling behind it i would have fun doing instances if they didn't give me experience and levels if they were giving me things that were useful to play the game with um, so anyone that's up to the challenge of making a server like this and wants to consult with me on it, hit me up. If you don't want to consult with me and you just want to make this server, let me know you made it. I would love to play it. Um, there's no way I could set something like this up. There's tons of smart people out there in the private server community. So uh, have at it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for listening.